Today's gaming PC is going to be a very special one. I've been asked by Intel Australia and New Zealand to put together a PC that's under the budget of 1500 Australian dollars. And I'll be going up against another YouTuber, Gear Seekers, to see who can produce the best value versus performance PC. And I'll throw these benchmarks up on the screen for you. So eight benchmarks, three creator, and there is five gaming benchmarks at 1080p. Now there are some rules to this build. The first being we have to use an Intel 12th generation processor. And the second rule is we have to use components we can purchase readily and easily from major Australian New Zealand tech retail outlets listed on the screen. This rules out purchasing parts from eBay or marketplaces to try and find a used deal there because that is not indicative of what the average person can build a PC like this for. Also, today's video is sponsored by Intel and thanks to them, I'm gonna be giving this PC away after I've built it and run the benchmarks. So stay tuned on how you can get in with a chance to win, but let's go through with the parts selection and then we'll build this thing up and see how it can perform. Welcome back to Tech Yes City. Now, when it comes to benchmarks and getting the best performance possible for a particular budget, I always place the most emphasis on your CPU and your graphics card. So for the CPU, we're going with an i5-12600. And you're probably thinking, well, why didn't you go with the K-CPU or why didn't you go with the 12400? And there's two reasons for that. The first being we didn't go with the K because we get an included CPU cooler with the 12600 and also we didn't go with the 12400 because the 12600 and also the 12500 they actually have a better built-in onboard graphics which i believe we will need for the creator benchmark and although we've featured up until this point intel's 12th gen i5 range here which offers some of the best balance between gaming and productivity if you want to take things a further step down in cost the 12th gen i3 12100 at the extreme budget range also offers uhd graphics and has exceptionally good performance too. Now for the graphics card, we are going with an ASRock Challenger Pro RX 6700 XT. We got this at a bargain price in my opinion from BPC Tech. This is the three fan edition. I believe it's gonna be perfect for the benchmarks that we're gonna be running here today to get that most performance possible. Then for the memory, we're going with 16 gigabytes, that's two by eight gigabyte sticks of silicon power 3600 megahertz CL18. Now it is important in my opinion to get the best value RAM possible. And at this current point in time, I believe DDR4 3600 megahertz is the way to go. Now for the motherboard, we're going with the B660 gaming motherboard here from Gigabyte. This is a cookie cutter solution. If I had a bit more in the budget, I'd definitely get something like an ASRock Steel Legend and of course upgrade to 32 gigabytes of memory. But then we're going with the SSD, 240 gigabytes, just like the motherboard. We are cutting it close here to this budget. And so saving some money on storage is just as crucial as saving it on the motherboard. Then for the power supply, we've got a CX650M from Corsair, semi-modular power supply. Corsair make great power supplies. So this thing should be able to power this build with no sweats at all. Then for the last piece of the puzzle here, we have the case. We're going with the Deepcool Mark Cube 110. Great looking case, includes a rear outtake fan. It's got tempered glass. It looks good. It's presenting great value in my opinion. And with that aside, I'll put the total budget up on the screen for you guys where I'm literally hitting that $1,500 mark right on the pinpoint. So we came in here without a dollar to spare. Let's quickly whip this thing up because it's important on what I'm gonna be doing with some of the tuning settings here to get the most out of this rig to get the best benchmarks possible.
And we've built this gaming PC up with absolute ease. It was a breeze from start to finish. However, once we've finished this gaming PC, there are a couple of things I want to do to get the max performance possible. And the first thing involves going into the BIOS, making sure the memory XMP profiles are locked in. And in this case, it's just a matter of changing one setting. And then besides that, I also like to undervolt 12th generation CPUs, especially locked CPUs. And here's where with the i5-12600, we settled with minus 20 millivolts. Usually with other CPUs, I can get up to minus 100 millivolt, but in this case, minus 20 millivolt is where this CPU like to run stable whilst using less power, but still getting the maximum performance possible. Then the last tweak we did was with the graphics card where we upped the VRAM speeds an extra 150 megahertz in the Adrenaline software. And so running some stress tests with Cinebench R23 and also Unigine Heaven showed that our PC was now stable and ready to run those gaming benchmarks. Where the first benchmark we're pulling up here is Valorant 1080p and I decided to test both the lowest and maximum settings just in case Gear Seekers is doing some other settings we'll be able to show the range of FPS that we're getting here. And at the lowest settings at 1080p, we got 374 average FPS and a 1% low of 198, and then a 0.1% low of 85. And then putting the settings up all the way to maximum, we got here 366 average FPS, and then 187 and 37. So this was a smooth experience, but there wasn't really any of a difference to be had with lowering the graphics settings. So this game was becoming CPU bound, but the FPS is extremely high. And you're gonna get a very smooth experience in this game. Then the next title we've got up here is Cyberpunk. And here's where we saw a similar trend to Valorant where the low preset, we got 164 average FPS and then 107 and 72 on the 1%, 0.1% lows respectively. And moving over to max settings, we then got 162, 101 and 61. Though the next title we got here is CSGO, and here's what we've got with the lowest settings, 526, and then a 1% low of 101 and 0.1% low of 90, and then stepping things up to the maximum settings, we got here 473, 82, and 76. So there was a little bit of a difference to be had by dropping the graphics settings, but it wasn't making much of a difference, meaning that the i5-12600 is pairing very nicely with the 6700 XT, for maximum 1080p gaming. Moving on to Hitman 3, we had here on the lowest settings, we got 270 average FPS and then 119 on the 1% lows, then 111 on the 0.1% lows. Going over to maximum settings, we had 119, and then 55 and 44. And then the last title we tested here was Shadows of the Tomb Raider. Going with low settings, we had 207 FPS and then a minimum of 145, and then over to the maximum ultra preset here, we had 156 and 121. Now we couldn't test the 1% and 0.1% lows in this game because it does have these breaks in between the benchmark sections. So you'll get an inaccurate result for the 1% and 0.1% lows. And now we're moving over to the productivity benchmarks. And first up, we've got the Adobe Suite. The Premiere Pro benchmark here is the Puget Bench, which is pretty much a set and forget benchmark. So Gear Seekers and I will, should have the exact same benchmark running. And so we got here a score of 921 points. And then moving over to the Photoshop benchmark, we then ended up with a score of 899 points. And then the last of the Adobe benchmarks was Lightroom Classic. And here we got a score of 1,020 points. And now in closing out with this gaming PC, I am extremely impressed with what it can do in the gaming side of things. And for the productivity scores, they look pretty solid. I mean, anything close to 1,000 in the Puget Bench benchmarks is pretty good. But that aside, we've got a PC here that's come in at 1,500 Aussie dollars and it's absolutely amazing in what it can do for 1080p gaming. And with the synergy of parts that we've used here today, we have gone full cookie cutter to get in at that price point and produce the best results. Now, if I had the option, if I had a little bit more freedom in terms of budget, I would increase the budget a little bit here 
and go for say an ASRock uh, Steel Legend B660 and then throw in another 16 gigabytes of memory to make 32 gigabytes of memory and perhaps then go with a 12600K or KF if I was just gaming and add in a custom cooler, something like a snowman, just to keep the temperatures of the CPU a little bit cooler than the stock cooler. And lastly, I would add in a one terabyte M.2 SSD, and in total, that would probably increase my budget another $250 to $300, but in my opinion, it would just make the system much more relevant in terms of being a higher end system, especially not just for gaming, but for doing more productivity work, where I think 32 gigabytes is much more suitable for that line of work. Though as it stands with the performance numbers, I'm very impressed. The motherboard was absolutely fine handling the 12600 with that mini overvolt that we did. And then the graphics card was just humming along with temperatures around 60 degrees on pretty much most of these benchmarks. And this is in a 24C ambient environment here in Japan. It's probably the temperature that I like running at most of the time around 22 to 25 degrees. Some people like it cooler, some people like it hotter. I think that's like my Kellogg's, it's just right. That's the cereal. Though with that aside, do let us know in the comment section below what you think of this build right here. I personally, if I'm going with a newer build nowadays, especially if I'm doing any productivity work, I actually do like to have that onboard GPU encoder available because when you're streaming, for example, you can use the quick sync and then free up the extra resources on your GPU because using the GPU encoder will take a little bit of a hit on performance. But if you've got that free onboard GPU portion from the 12600 in this case, that will free up some resources. And if it's being idle, you might as well use it. Not to mention you can use it in the future to diagnose any problems and rule out, say for instance, if a graphics card becomes faulty in the future, you can easily test that by just resetting the BIOS and then plugging out from the main board. So it is useful to have that GPU, but if you're just gaming, then you can always go with the F or the KF series processors. I do like what the 12th gen has to offer in terms of flexibility. And especially if you're on a budget, having the option to go for DDR4 instead of DDR5 is one of the best things that Intel's done with 12th generation for people on a budget. Though with that aside, do let us know if you would make some changes at the $1,500 price point, or of course, if you had a bit more money to spend, what would you change in this build? Love reading your thoughts and opinions as always. And we'll get onto the question of the day, which comes from M Random Studios. And they ask, since you're on a visa extended, was there anything about filling out your work mandatory monetary making process for the visa or the apartment. So in terms of me getting the visa and even getting my apartment here, that was done through friends and family. So it's pretty difficult to do it if you haven't been to Japan. And so if you wanna get into Japan, the easiest way to do that and even purchase apartments and stuff like that is to come here on a temporary visa, say a tourist visa. And then while you're here, you can maybe find a job get a, a working visa, and then that will unlock your potential to buy property and also live like a Japanese would. And so that'll unlock uh, so many more options. That would be the best way to get a foot in the door into Japan. So I hope that answers that question. And also if you guys have stayed this far and you wanna know how to win with the chance for the giveaway, then I will put some links in the description below. However, it is open to only Australian and New Zealand residents. And I will be announcing the winner on Twitter and big thanks for Intel for sponsoring out this video. It was a lot of fun. I do really like it when sponsored content comes in and I have a lot of freedom to do what I want. So I really think this is one of the best and my favorite sponsored videos I've done. And I hope you guys enjoyed it. And with that aside, I'll catch you in another tech video very soon. If you stayed this far as always and you're enjoying that tech yes content, be sure to hit that sub button, ring that bell, and I'll catch you in the next one. Peace out for now. Bye. Stick close.